This is eastern cottonwood, and as its leaves blow in the wind, you can hear it from quite a distance. It almost sounds like rainfall. The Choctaw name for this plant was Etehesha Kaklaashe, which means tree leaf noisy in Choctaw. So a great name, Apache name is Tis. Omaha Ponca called it Ma Zon, cotton tree. It's also called Alamo in Spanish, and yes, that fort is named after this tree. So the common name cottonwood comes from the, the fruits of these, which produce these cotton-like fluff, but it also has really soft wood. So if you want to take it literally, cottonwood, and its wood was very favored by the Hopi and used by many tribes of the southwest in the desert because this is one of the few large tree species you can get in a desert area. That's because it grows next to rivers and streams. So it always wants to grow in areas where its roots can touch water year-round. And these come right by the Colorado River, and they reach this astounding size over there. I've seen one that fell down over there that's you know, twice the, the diameter of this. But they've got a distinctive furrowed bark. The buds of the leaves in the early spring were eaten by both the Apache and Diné. So the Teton Dakota and Northern Cheyenne ate the inner bark of this species. So they would use young trees and they would gather it in the early summer. You peel off the bark and you scrape the inner bark off and it was eaten either raw or boiled. The inner bark of several other species in this genus were eaten. So the inner bark of Populus grandidentata was scraped off by the Ojibwe and boiled to eat. And the inner bark of Populus trichocarpa was peeled off and eaten by the flathead. So the inner bark of quaking aspen or Populus tremuloides was eaten by the Apache Blackfeet. Cree and Chippewa. They used the younger trees and they would peel off a section of bark and scrape it off and eat it either raw or cooked. And then the inner bark of all these species in the populous genus have a sweet taste to them. And that's where they were eaten. But they're, the quaking aspen inner bark was made into a tea to drink by the Northern Cheyenne. And it could also be boiled for a long time in order to extract some sugar from it. The leaves of these species are fed upon by aphids. And aphids produce honeydew, which is their excrement, but since they're feeding directly on the vascular system, they're plugged in directly to the sap, a lot of the sap just gets pushed straight through their bodies before they can digest it. And so their excrement, or honeydew as we like to call it, uh, frass is very rich in sugars. And honeydew was collected from reeds by various California Indians and that was used for a sugar by them. And the ghost ute, they would use the honeydew off of cottonwood leaves in the same way. So I'm not sure their method, but the method of certain California tribes was to take the reeds and then dry them in the sun and then flail them over a mat or a hide and the honeydew crystals would collect and be mushed together and then you just basically have a ball of sugar. And it's one of the very few wild sugar sources. You have that and honey and the honeybee is not native to the U.S. I'm not sure what honey is produced by native bees but it's rather limited. The sap of quaking aspen was gathered by the ute in June just like you do maple syrup. Well they would cut a slash in the trunk and then they would put a, a hollow deer leg bone that was sharpened that would stick it into the tree and then the sap would collect down into that deer bone and drip into a container and they would just drink it fresh a very nice sweet drink mushrooms found on the decaying wood of this species either on the trunk or a limb or on the ground around it coming from the roots those were eaten by the tewa and kahuila so i'm not sure what kind of mushrooms they were but a mushroom of a given species isn't the same depending on what tree it's growing on so if it's growing on a tree with a lot of uh, toxic properties you probably don't want to eat it and this one's a very uh, non-toxic tree with not a lot of uh, defensive compounds. Maybe they were oyster mushrooms. Another interesting use of the cottonwood by various plains tribes, such as the Northern Cheyenne and Lakota and uh, Dakota, Pawnee, Ponca, around the Missouri River region, they would cut down stands of young cottonwood trees in order to allow their horses to forage upon the leaves. So it's apparently uh, well liked by horses as a forage. They just can't reach it. So those cottony seed down from the fruits those are uh, produced in profusion in the summer and those were gathered and stuffed into pillows by the caddo and the Navajo used them for tinder and friction fire starting and those fruiting bodies or these balls those were used by as a yellow dye by the Dakota, Pawnee, Ponca, and Omaha to dye feathers and such.
The leaf buds of these have been used as a dye by the Northern Cheyenne, Dakota, Pawnee, Ponca, and Omaha. And what's interesting is they apparently come in a lot of different colors. So green, yellow, white, red, and purple, I think. And they would determine what color a bud would be by scraping it on sandstone. So I'm not sure if they differ depending on individual tree or maybe by individual bud, but they were used to decorate hides, so teepees and parfletches and robes. The specific epithet of the scientific name Populus deltoides comes from the triangular shape of the leaves, so it's a deltoid shape. And these leaves were actually used to wrap cigarettes by the Comanche. The shoots were a common basketry material of the Apache, especially for burden basket, and they're considered tougher to use than willow, which is a well-known basketry material. And by tougher to use, I mean stronger. So they were better for burden baskets, and the Gosiute used them similarly. So the leafy branches or boughs of cottonwood were used by the Comanche and Diné of Navajo for shelters in the summer, basically just a shade covering so they could just be stuck into the ground by walls and they were used in the arbor for the Comanche sun ceremony. The sap was used as an adhesive by the Comanche to attach feathers to arrow shafts. Now, since it's one of the few large woody trees in desert areas, it was highly esteemed by the Hopi and uh, many other tribes of the Southwest, and it was used commonly in construction. So cottonwood poles were used to build lodges and houses, and uh, used to build platforms for mesquite bean granaries and it had many other purposes as well. The Tewa used them for drums. The Diné would hollow out sections and use them for their bellows and furnaces. Cottonwood sticks were used as the drills in friction fire starting by the Diné. And the dry rotted wood, so if you find a down log and you break it open in the cinder, it's sort of just crumbly wood, that was used as a, a tinder for fire starting by the Diné. And the inner bark of balsam poplar was made into a sort of cloth by the Klamath.